Good morning. Good morning. sorted out there we are how are you how are you what a lovely day it's not a lovely day actually it's a very gray and rainy day but it's uh it's still quite warm which is good we had some oil delivered yesterday so i turned the heating on and it worked for about an hour and then it just stopped and it just shut itself down it's a blooming thing it's god knows what's going on anyway uh might have to get a heating engineer in. We are um, we're experiencing an unprecedented demand for our services at work. In fact, I'm thinking of having to uh, work a full week. This is, you know, Monday to Friday. Oh. And uh, the only thing I can pin it on is our uh, marketing campaign. We. As we, we get most of our patients in through word of mouth and Google, so I've always been a bit skeptical about other channels. You know, there are all sorts of other things you can spend money on. And at the moment, we're spending about seven, eight hundred pounds a month on uh, combined uh, adverts, which include um, a quarter page in the local free newspaper, which is distributed from Sainsbury's, etc., um, and. A radio ad on uh, KMFM, which is the is quite a popular local, you know, popular music station, and uh, web advertising, which I've never seen because I have an ad blocker turned on. But I, I, they tell me I've had 61 clicks, so which is you know all right. So anyway. Um, So uh, you know, we're just we're just getting the phones ringing a lot, and a lot of new patients coming in. And I think uh, you know the only other thing I can you know attribute this to is the fact that our receptionist has left, and I can't help but think that she she wasn't a very good salesperson. She put a bit of a dampener on. She's quite hesitant. She stammered a lot, and she was. She was more than happy to tell patients that we couldn't do what they wanted or that, that we uh, couldn't provide the sort of service that they were after and stuff like that. And so, um, and just generally wasn't very uh, positive and cheerful and didn't have a sort of a can-do attitude. We had, she had more of a can't-do attitude. So I think that, to whatever extent, I think that's probably contributed a bit. And also, uh, the, you know, since she's left, morale has been a lot higher and. Uh, and that shows through the staff are more chirpy they know they they laugh a lot and they're singing away and and the patients notice these sort of things you know uh, it's a much happier place to work a much nicer environment but um, I've got a couple of things on my brain this morning one of which is and they're, they're mostly to do with America to be honest because uh, there's a massive great, uh, well there's a movement in South America to band together to try and um, you know, form, form a, a mob or a caravan as they call it to trek north to the Mexico-United States border and try and gain entry into Mexico, into, into the United States. And why now, I don't know. I don't know whether it's because uh, the um, gradient, the wealth gradient between South America and North America has got to the point where people are spontaneously, you know, starting to migrate en masse. Um, or whether, um, I, I don't know why now anyway, but the point is that they're, they're arriving and well, they're, they're threatening to arrive. And uh, President Trump has dispatched 10,000 troops in addition to the border force. To stop what what is likely to be, uh, you know, 250 mothers with children, which, you know, I can see why he's done that. It's not really the relative strengths of the forces that are the relevant, are the, are the sort of the relevant issue. It's the, you know, it, it, he would be better off sending a strong message to these people that you're not going to get across. So you might as well not make the journey. You know, you have to nip this in the bud. You have to stop. Otherwise, uh, if people think there's even a 1% chance that they might make it, then, um, <clears throat> then 
you know, if like a million people might start to move on the basis that possibly 10,000 people will get across. And that is established game theory. I mean, you know, it, that's why birds fly in flocks and, uh, well, and for, for aerodynamic reasons as well. But, uh, or fish swim in shoals, is because in a group you're far more likely, you're far more, you're far more likely to be picked off by the authorities or the sharks if you're a single uh, person because what it allows them, the authorities to concentrate their resources on you alone and in which case you're outnumbered whereas if you spread their resources very thin um, then, I don't know, where's he going? Okay. Uh, if you spread their resources thin, then there's a chance that uh, they may not have the resources to personally uh, take action against you. And so that's the theory, I think, behind the bulk migration movement, is that you can't do it on your own. But if you're one of a group of 100,000 rushing aboard a checkpoint, there is a good chance that you will get through. So anyway, the um, <clears throat> a sort of a corollary of that is that uh, Trump is also looking at... Um, denying uh, US citizenship to children of parents, non-US citizens who are in the UK. And this is, a, this is another branch of the you know, anti-immigration movement. And, and again, it's quite understandable because whether or not a baby that's born in the United States should be a United States citizen is actually not the issue. The issue is that uh, a large number of people will try, if, if they think that their child will be a US citizen, if they are born in the United States, then a large number of people will try and have, will try and get into the country illegally merely to have a child. And I know that sounds desperate and, and, and a bit, you know, a lot of work for not much, but this is not much, this is not, not much to these people, you know, they are they want their children to have a better life if they're than, than growing up in Guatemala, for example, or Peru or Chile. They would rather their, if they can just get one child <laughs> to be an American citizen, then uh, not only does that increase the chances of them being able to go to the United States, but also um, mean that that child can, will, will have relatively high earnings and be able to remit money back home, etc., etc. So that's a massive, um, motivation you know for people to go to try to get to America to have babies now this is all covered by an, an amendment and it all hinges around the phrasing of the word subject to the jurisdiction because uh, the, the Constitution says that anyone born in the United States and subject to its jurisdiction is entitled to become an American citizen and the subject to jurisdiction is the is the sticking point because the people who say that uh, and Trump is saying that he can he can write an executive order which will um, which will prevent the babies of of illegal immigrants being given American citizenship and uh, because the illegal immigrants are not subject to the American jurisdiction now the. Uh, the original constitutional amendment was incorporated to um, give the right of American citizenship to slaves and uh, children of slaves. And it was tested a few years uh, after when a Chinese couple who were sort of dip had, uh, diplomats and therefore Chinese citizens had a baby in the United States and there was some debate about whether or not this uh, baby was United States citizens or not and the Supreme Court ruled that the baby was in fact an American citizen and um, the reason why was because the the two Chinese diplomats had been given permanent leave to remain you know they they'd got uh, the right to live in America permanently so they were they were pretty much permanent residents and it didn't make any sense for their baby to be either called uh, Chinese or or, um, or uh, have no sort of no fixed abode <laughs> so um, now that wasn't the end of the matter that's as far as Trump is concerned that's not the end of the matter because 
uh, subject to this jurisdiction, the, the Chinese were subject to the jurisdiction. What they're saying is they were permanent residents, so and effectively they were like quasi-Americans anyway. And um, but somebody, for example, who like if my wife and I went to America and had a baby over there, then we're UK citizens, but we're not. We're not. We don't have permanent residence. So are we there? Are we subject to their jurisdiction? In the in the sense that that phrase was meant. Are we? And certainly, if we were illegal immigrants and we went over there illegally and had a baby. Uh, you know, you're even further removed from being subject to the jurisdiction, or in other words, being a naturalised uh, citizen or a permanent resident, etc. So that's what it all revolves around. Whereas the, uh, you know, so so both people can make, and and I think uh, what will happen is Trump will make an order and it'll go to the courts, and the courts will have to decide what subject to the jurisdiction means. Now. Here's where the dental angle comes in, okay? There's a dental angle to everything. And the dental angle is, the Americans are, and think they are, it. You know, they think they're it. They're, uh, they, for example, if an, if an English person goes to America, then uh, the English authorities won't try and tax them on their American income. The Americans will tax them on it. Whereas if an American person comes to England, they, they will, unless they've renounced their American citizenship, which is extremely expensive to do and involves paying, paying a, a hypothetical, uh, you know, a calculated figure, which is based on the amount of tax that the Americans think that they're going to lose as a result of this person skipping, skipping the country. Um, Americans are taxed on their uh, overseas income, and. Uh, similarly, you know, if uh, if I'm accused of committing a crime in America, uh, I mean, and I don't have to have committed a crime in America or been to America. I mean, if I am accused in America of committing a crime anywhere in the world, then I can be extradited from the UK to America to face the charge that I uh, that I committed a crime. And I'd like to stress that this crime does not have to be committed in America. You can be acting quite lawfully by your own country's rules. And uh, look at that idiot. Laurie's skidding because he wants to race around the roundabout. Yeah, so. Um, and uh, likewise, uh, if an American citizen has a crime committed against them, then, uh, you, so, so for example, if I have um, a website and my website provides services, and my my uh, website provides services to people who live, let's say, in New York, and uh, in the eyes of the New York authorities, I am breaking one of their laws, one of their laws, because they're, they're it relates to a citizen who lives in New York then I can be extradited to New York to face charges in a New York court for a crime which isn't a crime where I live and where my website is based and where I am acting completely legally in my own local jurisdiction but is alleged to be a crime where the customer is resident. Okay, now, which is which I think gives us a problem in dentistry in treating American patients. And those of you who've got uh, business accounts and um, you know, you may have, um, you may have had a questionnaire recently about um, saying, you know, do you do any business in America? Have you got American customers? Etc. Etc. Because the the FATCA, uh, the FATCA, FATCA, which I'm sure is they ch you know they like because it sounds like fat cats in the same way as nice was the nice was <laughs> the body that was charged with being nasty and uh, withdrawing drugs from people who needed them on the NHS on the grounds of cost. 
and carried on being called nice and people like John Humphreys thought it was highly amusing and it was called nice even after they changed the name from National Institute for Clinical Excellence they changed it to the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence and they still called it nice because it, it suited their purposes for people to think it was a funny friendly jokey sort of body that was nice you know so anyway um, you could have a problem treating Americans and that's because if they're American citizens and the American uh, government decides that you've done something which might be a crime in America you know, or, or, even, or is even alleged to have been a crime in America you know someone could just make an accusation in an American court that an American citizen may have been uh, the subject of a victim of a crime or a fraud or something um, you could well find yourself being extradited to the United States to answer those charges now will the, will the UK extradite you to the America to America yes they will Will they uh, wait until you've been tried and convicted in the United States to extradite you? No, they won't. They will, they will quite happily, on the American say-so, lock you up. They'll arrest you, lock you up, if necessary, pending a withdraw your passport, pending extradition to the United States to stand trial on the charges, on the allegations that uh, a crime has uh, been committed, which is a crime in America, which may not be a crime in the UK. Now it wouldn't be so bad if American patients weren't so picky but they are, believe me, there are people do have national characteristics and an American patient is a hundred times more likely to come back and say they don't like the crown that you've done for them or they don't like the bridge that you've done for them or they, they're not happy with the implant that you've done for them because it's, it's uh, 0.3 of a millimetre wrong, you know. So, because they are, you know, they're the standards that they have uh, been brought up with and live by in the United States and the United States dentists know this and, and that's why dentistry in the United States is so bloody expensive because they know what's expected and they charge accordingly. And then patients in the United Kingdom are, have historically been quite um, tolerant in terms of their dentistry. They're, for the most part they're quite pleased to get anything done at all uh, and they're not they're not very picky about uh, slight mismatches in colour and crowns and stuff like that you know. So as I'm going to work this morning I'm thinking because we my, my practice is in an odd situation in that it used to be the occupational health unit for the Pfizer Pfizer company, and Pfizer had a massive, great uh, factory in Sandwich. They made Viagra there and all sorts of stuff. And um, because they got tremendous tax breaks, I mean, they didn't come here because uh, of the weather, you know, or the location. They came here because the uh, coal mining industry got shut down and while uh, places like Nottingham and uh, uh, further north are devastated we did have two coal mining pits in uh, Kent, uh, Snowdon and uh, Aylsham. So we had two collieries shut and the European Union in their munificence decided that wherever there was uh, you know in, in the UK they needed to cushion soften the blow for the closure of all these pits and so they granted uh, there was a lot of grant money about for new businesses I believe that um, uh, there was a flying school set up you know so that all the the miners could uh, become flying instructors that was one of the way places that the money went um, and uh, the whole area was designated a disaster area, financial rejuvenation area, and it, we attracted the attention of Pfizer, a massive great company that jumps all over the world depending on where it can pay no tax. And they had a lot of American executives, obviously it's an American company, and um, they came over and they were like, you know, well we've got medical and dental insurance, so where do we go? Where do we go? So, <laughs> finding a private doctor is not that not that hard. But um, 
they couldn't send them to the National Health Service. And being a big company and everyone being on the dental plan, they decided that they didn't want to keep giving people days off for um, dental appointments. So they, they built a dental unit and it was state of the art. And it worked very well for them until um, someone else offered them a better deal or the incentives ran out here and so they buggered off to Switzerland or, or wherever they are now. And um, so the unit had to relocate and it relocated here uh, and uh, uh, has, has a lot of um, clients who still uh, have got at Pfizer.com as their email address. Well, it may be, and I'm sure every practice has got a few Americans. It's, it's not going to affect us disproportionately, but we would be the first practice in the country to to respectfully decline to treat anybody who is a US citizen. But I am struggling to find a reason why that is not necessary. Because the Americans, they're, they're not, they don't debate this. They're not going to say, you know, should anything happen to an American citizen and should they be minded to um, take things further? They don't have to use the UK courts to do this. They could, they could use their local court in the United States and the, and the US courts are arrogant enough, you know. In the, I could end up with a letter from some court in Mississippi saying, Mr. Watson, we hear you've upset uh, Mrs. So-and-so, who lives in, you know, who's resident and, uh, in Mississippi and has got a residential address in the, in the jurisdiction of the court, and we'd like you just to pop over, uh, if it, you know, if you'd be so kind, but even if you wouldn't be so kind, and, uh, and answer the, um, you know, the, the grand jury or wherever it is. And I just don't want that. I don't want that. It would mean uh, chucking up probably two, three patients, but it would cause it might make the national news. I don't know. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are. There's a dental connection to everything. Okay, all right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.